Howdy everyone, today I'm looking at a pretty exciting new ultra wide angle zoom lens for full frame cameras, the Tamron 15-30mm f2.8 VC USD. What an exciting formula, a fast maximum aperture of f2.8, an extremely wide angle of 15mm as well as image stabilization, all combined to make a unique and potentially exciting lens. And if you know where to look, it can be obtained for about £700 or a thousand US dollars. Expensive for sure, but good value compared to the competition. This lens is primarily designed for full frame cameras, where 15mm is an ultra wide angle, dramatically stretching your corners and fitting tons of field into your image. It's useful for capturing wide landscapes, giving unexciting scenes a dramatic new perspective or shooting indoors or in tight spots. The lens also zooms in to 30mm, giving you some nice flexibility to work with. You can also fit this lens onto an APS-C camera if you really want, but the zoom range is far less interesting, covering a wide angle to standard focal length. It'll work, but really this lens was born for full frame cameras. The wide maximum aperture of f2.8 lets in quite a lot of light and makes it easier to shoot indoors or in darker conditions. f2.8 can also give you more noticeably out of focus backgrounds. And the image stabilization, which Tamron calls VC, is a seriously nice feature, helping you to get sharper still pictures. Here's some footage at 15mm without stabilization. And here it is with the stabilization turned on. It's not a huge difference at 15mm, but it's definitely helping. Let's zoom in to 30mm. The stabilization is helping a lot more now, keeping the image nice and still. It's also quite well behaved when you tilt and pan the lens around, so it'll be useful for video work. Let's look at its build quality. As you can see, this lens is a sure contender for bulkiest wide-angle lens in the world. It's simply huge, and its gigantic form will dwarf any camera body you fit it to. It weighs over 1 kilo, or about 2.5 pounds, so it's not an ideal lens for light travelling. This lens really means serious business. Its zoom ring is at the front and turns the opposite direction to Canon's cameras, but the same as Nikon, which is typical for a Tamron lens. It turns heavily and not very smoothly. You can forget about getting nice, slow zooms from this lens in your video work. The large and vulnerable glass front element moves forwards and back as you zoom in and out, within the confines of the built-in lens hood. You won't be able to fit any filters to the front of this lens, unfortunately. However, it does come with a very nice lens cap, which fits comfortably and safely to the front. The lens's focus ring is much nicer than the zoom ring. It's very smooth to turn, precise and well damped. The lens has full-time manual focusing, so you can turn that ring at any time. The ultrasonic autofocus motor is lightning fast, very accurate and very quiet, as you can see here. On the metal lens mount, we also get a gasket for some weather sealing. Tamron know how to make professional photographers happy. All in all, the lens's build quality is excellent, although its zoom ring is a bit stiff. It's definitely a hefty piece of kit. Let's see about the all-important picture quality. An ultra-wide-angle lens really needs to be sharp from corner to corner. How will the Tamron cope? We'll start by testing on a full-frame camera a 20 megapixel Canon 6D. At 15mm and f2.8, straight away we see fantastic sharpness and contrast in the middle of the image. Let's take a look in the corners. Impressively, they are also nice and sharp, with good contrast and very little chromatic aberration. What a result! The very extreme edges are a little bit dark and blurry, but that really is right in the edge. Stop the aperture down to f4 for even more sharpness and brightness, right into those corners, and at f5.6 we see razor sharpness from corner to corner. Well, those are pretty great results for any ultra-wide-angle lens on a full-frame camera. Let's zoom in now to 30mm. 
Straight from f2.8, the lens remains extremely sharp in the middle of the image. And the corners? Not quite as good at 15mm. They look slightly dull and only reasonably sharp. Stop down to f4 for a lot more brightness and a little more sharpness. At f5.6, the corners are quite sharp, and at f8, very sharp. So, it seems that Tamron's lens designers prioritised getting it to be sharper at 15mm rather than 30mm. That's a wise enough decision though, one that most photographers will be satisfied with. After all, your cause to buy a lens like this is to take pictures at 15mm, and that's where the image quality really shines. It would be nice if 30mm was a little bit sharper in the corners, but it's plenty good enough. Let's take a quick look at how this lens performs on APS-C, just out of curiosity. On my 18MP Canon 60D, and at 15mm and f2.8, the lens is brilliantly sharp in the middle of the image, and things look great in the corners too. Stop down to f4 for a touch more resolution. Now, if we zoom in to 30mm, the picture quality is very sharp and punchy in the middle, straight from f2.8. The corners are not very sharp, however, and we can see a touch of purple chromatic aberration creeping in, too. Stop down to f4 for an improvement, but this is about as sharp as the corners get. Here they are at f8, and not really any better. So, anyone making the slightly odd decision to buy this lens for their APS-C camera will be rewarded with fantastic picture quality at 15mm, but slightly soft corners at 30mm. Let's take a look now at distortion and vignetting on a full-frame camera. At 15mm we see some noticeable barrel distortion, which gets slightly stronger in the edges. It's noticeable in your pictures, but I have seen worse. At f2.8, there is some darkness in the corners of the image, but it actually seems reasonably good for such a wide-angle lens at f2.8. Stop the aperture down to f4 and the corners become brighter. When you zoom in to 21mm, the distortion straightens out. Zoom in all the way to 30mm for some moderate pincushion distortion. We do see some vignetting at f2.8, the corner shading falls a lot more gently here than it does at 15mm though. Stop down to f4 and those corners brighten up. Overall, distortion and vignetting are noticeable, but this is actually a better performance than average for a fast, ultra-wide angle lens. The lens can focus down to just under 28cm, which is good enough for dramatic pictures of flowers and other small subjects if you're so inclined to use an ultra-wide angle lens that way. At f2.8, the close-up picture quality is just reasonably sharp. Things look a lot more accomplished when you stop down to f4 though, with a very clean and punchy image. Let's see how the lens performs against bright light. It gives a good account of itself at 15mm. There is a loss of contrast, but the flaring effects are quite soft and pretty, really. Zoom into 30mm though, and the lens shows a different side to its personality, with more defined and intrusive flaring. Finally, bokeh. This is a wide-angle lens, so you won't be getting the most out-of-focus backgrounds, but shooting at f2.8 and close-up will certainly help. Those blurry backgrounds are not completely melting away, but there's nothing distracting going on either, no weird highlighting or anything. No problems here. Overall, this heavyweight camera lens punches very strongly in image quality. There are no real optical problems to speak of, and it's very sharp indeed at 15mm, even with the aperture wide open at f2.8. As a Canon user, if I were on the market for a new ultra-wide-angle lens for my full-frame camera, this is undoubtedly the one I would choose for still photography or video work. It's great fun, and its fantastic images speak for themselves. Tamron have done a great job here, and for full-frame camera owners, this lens certainly comes highly recommended.